Hey everyone, welcome back to another Q&A. Murray, uh, we got a really good question uh, today. For I'm us, ready so for we're it. We're really going to put you to the test. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, for those who maybe haven't had the opportunity to hear your sermon, mm-hmm. uh, would you mind giving a quick recap? Yep, so we asked and hopefully began to answer part of the question, how does God speak? And we said primarily in two ways. We looked at Psalm 19. God speaks to us in general revelation uh, through creation. In in other words, we know general things about him, his character, uh, his power, his might, his grandeur, uh, his creativity. But in order for us to know our part in his story, how how we are sinful, how he's made a plan for salvation, who he is as, as a God, he's revealed himself in particular or special revelation in the word of God. So you've got uh, creation as general revelation and scripture as a particular revelation. When you were kind of sharing how the church planter came and when he was driving around here, noticed how many trees right. we have yep. uh, and where he comes from, they don't have trees like that. Uh, I don't ever notice the trees. Yep. Like it's so accustomed to me. And it got me thinking about how often I might take for granted that. Mm-hmm. Much like I might take for granted uh, God's general re- revelation through his creation or even his special revelation. Um, what can we do or how, how can it be helpful for us not to take for granted mm-hmm. uh, God's revelation? I think that's a, I think that's a great question. And, and part of the reason is because the psalm begins by saying the heavens declare the glory of God. And so we ought not pass too quickly over God's created world that is de- that is designed and created by him to bring him glory and us enjoyment. Mm-hmm. So um, it's, it's not wrong. In fact, it's very right and appropriate to look at the flowers or the grass of the field or the trees in the woods or the bushes and, and say, what an amazing God. Look at the intricacies. In fact, we had somebody after the service yesterday show me a picture of a human uh, uh, cell. And the cell uh, was all different kinds of shapes and colors within that cell. And they were saying, look at, look at how intricate and creative uh, uh, God made this cell. We can see the same things, albeit without a microscope, we can see the same things in God's creation. Yeah. And we ought not just say, eh, the grass looks good today. Yeah, that's right. Give me God glory for everything. Yeah, that's right. So our question uh, came about how uh, David, when he writes in Psalm 19, he says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. He goes on to say, uh, the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Uh, And this individual wanted to know, how do we reconcile that Mm -hmm. with some of the laws in the Old Testament, like Leviticus uh, 19, where it says you should stone the priest's daughter if... Uh, she is involved in prostitution, or in Deuteronomy 21, stoning the rebellious son, or even Deuteronomy 20, where uh, Israel is told to annihilate um, the Amorites, Hittites, uh, those people groups. It, it seems like, how, what do we deal with God's wrath from the Old Testament, but also delighting in the law of the Lord and knowing it's perfect? Ooh, that's a hard question to answer, and I don't know that I have the complete complete answer, but... Maybe you and I can go back and forth a little bit. Um, my initial thoughts are these. God's law reveals to us, just as God's created order reveals to us his character, so also does his law reveal to us his character. For example, uh, in the Old Testament uh, construction laws, people were to build a parapet, a mini wall around the top of their roof. Um, and you ask yourself, what does that tell us about God's character? It says he values human life. He doesn't want people to fall off their roofs because they would spend time on the roofs. And, and, so, um, and so every aspect of God's law reveals some aspect of his character. His character is holy and perfect. So every aspect of his law reveals some aspect of his holy and perfect character. At the same time, We need to be careful, this is my other thought, we need to be careful to not say God is forgiving and loving and kind without simultaneously saying that God is also wrathful and will not let evil deeds go unpunished. So you can't 
have forgiveness and love without also wrath existing as well. And I know that's probably uh, needs unpacking at a, to a greater extent at a later time maybe. But those two concepts, uh, those two characteristics of God um, must go together in order for either one to exist properly. And I think they do, right? In the burning of the priest's daughter in prostitution because um, Israel historically had a very big issue with being led astray, right? Mm -hmm. And following um, other religions. And a lot of times those religions were uh, steeped in prostitution. Mm -hmm. And if you've got the priest who is speaking on behalf uh, of God to the people Mm -hmm. and, and giving them truth, Yet, someone in his own family is participating in, in probably cult, mm-hmm. uh, cult activity, leading others astray. Mm-hmm. You can see how God's love for his people, mm-hmm. um, also the wrath combined, would say, look, we have to get rid of this or mm-hmm. else it's going to lead everyone astray. It's going to condemn everyone. Yep. Uh, and probably the same with the rebellious son. Yep. Right. And how uh, we can't have one individual leading others astray, damning them mm-hmm. uh, to disobey God's law. Uh, and so I, I think you can really see how God's wrath oftentimes is, hey, look, I'm trying to protect you at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the the psalm says the law of the Lord is perfect and holy and good, and the precepts are right. Uh, it, it doesn't say the consequences of our sin are beautiful in God's. In other words, God doesn't enjoy punishment and the consequence of sin. So whenever we see a law that makes us scratch our heads a little bit, one of the questions that we need to ask, and this is true of any kind of Bible interpretation, we say, what does this text or law tell us, tell us about God? And what does it tell us about ourselves and our need for God's grace? So, yeah. Yeah, that was, it's hard probably to really unpack. No, that's a great uh, question. Complication, but uh, we appreciate that question. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we didn't answer it in full, we would love for you to reach out, reach out to me or Murray. Uh, we can try to unpack that more, but... Uh, We thank you for listening today, and as always, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you.